Be sure to stick around to the last few minutes of today's video as I have a special message I want to deliver to all of you. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. Friends, jumping spiders are arguably becoming one of the most popular and adorable pet invertebrates people are choosing to keep in their homes. And that's no surprise, honestly. Their adorable personality, their fascinating hunting abilities, and the fact that they're quite easy to keep and the limited space they need to be kept properly makes them excellent candidates for those wishing to keep a more than four-legged friend. Not only this, if you really think about it, their adorable appearance makes them an incredible incredible way for people to overcome arachnophobia. If I had a dollar for every time one of you has commented on one of my videos saying that they're watching jumping spider content to slowly work towards overcoming an arachnophobia or general fear of spiders, I'd be rich because the reality is that's wonderful news to hear and it's really true. There is something very Pixar-esque, cartoony about jumping spiders that makes them different. People don't perceive them the same way as a traditional spider and it's very easy to anthropomorphize these animals because they do have such a... I don't know, like the, the way they move about, the way they're visually aware and perceptive with all those eyes, they truly turn their heads, they look at you, they respond to movement. It's not the same as a tarantula or anything like that. And so truly, I really do think they serve an excellent purpose in helping people learn about arachnids and develop a love and interest for them. And the hope is that from there you'll, you know, keep tarantulas too because they are just as incredible. So with that all being said, I want to do an update on my jumping spiders. Last year I made a video where I showed you how I bred my regal jumping spiders, the Phytopus regius. And I kind of left you with a giant one year long cliffhanger. The last you saw was that the female produced an egg sac and that egg sac did end up hatching and I recorded a bunch of footage on raising the offspring and that was a whole ordeal of quite the learning experience for me to be quite honest. So I have some footage from that I wanna show you and two offspring from that sack a year ago are now adults. Now here's the thing, I thought I had a pair, 1.1. Unfortunately for me, it turns out they're both boys. The one I thought was female, because they had sort of lighter coloration in that penultimate mold, and they're molting into a mature male, so I had to think fast. I'm like, okay, well this is great. I would love to be able to breed them. I would love to be able to show you more. So thankfully, I'm also going to be introducing you to my new female that comes from a unique bloodline. I haven't yet come up with a name for her. I have a suggestion that I already introduced to my patrons over on Patreon, but I'd love to get your opinions as well. I'm quite thankful that my friend Aaron over at Mini Beast Canada provided me with this sub-adult female that now recently just molted into an adult female. So we're gonna see her in a sec. We're also gonna feed my jumping spiders and I'm gonna show you the footage from before on how I raised up those offspring, a little bit of the like learning curves, how I housed them to get them to sub adults and so on and so forth. So I hope you enjoy today's video. It's going to be a fun jumping spider update. And then following this in the weeks to come, we'll be pairing up this new female with one of my two males that are from the sack that I produced from the original jumping spiders I purchased as slings the year before. So it's been a fun process having two generations of jumping spiders here. And now we're about to create a third generation with a new bloodline. So thank you again to Erin. I'm excited to introduce you to my new girl. She is gorgeous. Gorgeous, a beautiful orange spider at that. If you guys are new here, my name is Dion. I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates like the jumping spiders you're seeing here today. So if that's something that you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification off afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. All right, everybody, here are all the little jumping spiders. And yes, they have lots of dead fruit flies in their containers. Once a week, I go in there and clean and replace the paper towel that's with them. But other than that, I just leave the little dried up fruit flies in there with them. It's too much work to clean them all out and it doesn't cause them any ill or anything like that. Hey, this one just molted. Hello, little friend. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my routine where each little baby jumping spider will get fresh water by being sprayed with this handy dandy fine mist spray bottle. 
take a look it works really well as you can see it's an automatic spray bottle i'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check it out this thing is fantastic it's such a fine mist you don't want to use like a big spray bottle because these guys are so tiny you could risk drowning them this fine mist is perfect all right so here's the routine literally going to take a stack out like this gently turn them over make sure none of them are molting first and then you remove the lid so the first thing we're gonna do is we'll check on our little friend. There's a the little baby. Hi, they molted too. So now we'll go with our spray bottle and do one little, just like that. So you see how fine the mist particles are? Very, very fine droplets. It's perfect for them to be able to go around and have a little drink without having giant globs of water that can drown them. And you can see the paper towel slightly moistened and this also helps elevate the humidity a bit mind you though with that small bit of spritz and you see i left one side dry this will dry out because we have those cross ventilation holes holes on the top too so you don't want it staying too humid in there there needs to be airflow now before that's done we'll go ahead and place some fruit flies inside too so because this particular spider is still quite tiny we're going to stick to the melogasters there's tiny little fruit flies, as you can see. Hydei are reserved for the third to fourth instar babies. But yeah, the males should do good for these guys. So we'll pop that back on, turn it over gently, and we can see if maybe the spider will eat for us. Oh, he's gonna go for it. Boom! He got it. So friends, as you can see, our little jumping spider number one that we just did has food and some fresh water. Let's go ahead and do all the rest. Learning to successfully keep baby jumping spiders did take some trial and error. And if I'm being fully transparent, I did unfortunately suffer a few losses. Finding the right balance of humidity and airflow is key. Ensuring the animals are eating, offered food that isn't too big, or that doesn't intimidate them too much as little babies. You also have to make sure they don't dehydrate after a molt, as they grow a lot during that process and their abdomen shrinks significantly. These are all some of the things I had to figure out to find a system that served my animals well. Personally, I feed my baby jumping spiders two times a week and water them every other day. Once they've reached fourth to fifth instars, I move them into those adult sized containers for housing and I start to offer them small, gut loaded crickets as fruit flies just don't cut it anymore. That's a system that's worked well for me and I hope it helps you out. Okay guys, so there it is, the every other day routine. Jumping spiders are doing well, everybody's eating for the most part. You can see they're all munching and crunching on those little fruit flies. Some of them may not have started just yet, but they will grab some eventually, so awesome. All right guys, so first thing we're gonna do is a small update on my two Phidippus Regius males. So these are the ones that I thought originally were a pair. Hey buddy. How you doing? I never want to damage their web here, but we gently do this. Should be okay like that. Hey bud. As you can see here that this is a mature male. You can see the embolia or tibial hooks are there. If you look carefully, the bulbous pedipalps are visible. You can see that this animal is mature. Hello, how you doing? They're such lovely animals. See, they're so perceptive. I'll set him down here for a sec. The way I keep my jumping spiders are in these little containers. I don't know, by all means, keep them in a larger habitat if you like. Uh, but what I do is I have some substrate, at least an inch or so in the bottom, some wood, branches. Oh, there's the old mold. That's pretty cool. Well, those are the... Uh, uh, Cochranella granulosa in the background calling the granular glass frogs. You'll see an update on them soon. But um, then this just seems to work really well for them. And then I take them out like this and we'll, we'll feed them. So let's give this guy a little meal. See if he's hungry. So one of the things I get asked all the time is, Dion, why are you tongue feeding your jumping spiders? And the truth is, usually I do this to be able to demonstrate you guys the precision and accuracy, the perception and way that these animals pay attention to their surroundings. I mean, look, look at that. 
He's watching carefully. See that? Hey, little buddy. Hopefully that cricket doesn't run away right away. Guess not. Oh. Okay. It's gonna get away. He's like he's curious, but not going in for the kill here. You gonna get it or what? Oh. He missed! Back over the edge. He missed again! Let's try that again. Get it, get it, get it, get it! Ah! That is a lucky Jiminy. What is going on? How does he keep missing? You good, little buddy? There we go. It only took like a billion tries, but you got him. What a funny little spider. I'm gonna give his enclosure light misting. They work great for spiderlings and adults. You don't want something's gonna make a ton of drops everywhere, but it's perfect for the jumping spiders to get a drink, and it's safe for babies. It's very, very fine mist. I highly recommend them all. I'll put an Amazon link down in the video description if you want to purchase one. But see how fine the droplets are? It's not just like huge drops. It won't risk drowning the baby jumping spiders. And even the adults just cruise around uh, taking up the water. Obviously, once in a while, you want to rehydrate your actual substrate. But... For misting and watering, I use this, and it works really well. Okay, little buddy. Maybe we'll even catch him drinking. Also, you guys ask me all the time, Diane, where do you get these containers? I wish I could be more helpful, friends. Truthfully, these are just these snap little, I don't know, plastic containers I bought at an Asian dollar store back when I used to live in Vancouver. I thought they'd be perfect for sling enclosures. I stick a Dremel tool and drilled ventilation in the sides like that and in the top and that's that's about it. So I'm sorry they're not something commercially available but there's a lot of cool options out there. So you can get creative, hit up a dollar store or something and make something yourself. I think I paid like four, between two and four dollars for each of these containers. So pretty nice option. Okay, well here is the other jumping spider. Going to carefully move that like this. Hello there, buddy. Again. There we go. It's not ideal, but again, the web's not damaged, so he can come in and out of his little hammock. Hey, friend. How you doing? We're gonna do a little spray. Make sure he's well hydrated. Yeah, so he's not mature yet. If you look closely, you can also just tell. Uh, actually, we can compare it like this. See how he's smaller? His feet look different. They're not as large and padded. And the emboli are totally not the same. But yeah, I don't think this guy's gonna either. Hey, look, he has a face, nostrils and all right on his abdomen. Hey, little buddy. Doesn't seem like he's particularly down, does it? Do you like that? Nah, he's not. That's okay. Get the lid back on. Well, I guess they just really don't want to eat. Here is the new female I've been so excited to introduce you all to. Look how beautiful she is. Isn't she wonderful? Look at this girl. Hi there. So she just recently molted, and I have no doubt in my mind that she is going to want to eat. She's already very perceptive. You can see how many eyes she has there, and she's carefully waiting and watching. 
Hello. So this kind of shows you how easy or basic you can keep jumping spiders. Um, I'm gonna feed her once or twice in here and then move her into one of these style containers, I think, afterwards. She has a web hammock in here and there is her molt. But yeah, we'll try pairing her maybe in an upcoming video and then do a follow up on raising the jumping spiderlings and whatnot. But there she is. Tell me what you think of her. She is so sweet. All right, I'm gonna give her a little drink here. Just like that. All right, let's see if this little girl is interested in eating. Oh. Oh, there we go. She did it. Good job, little lady. Look at that. Oh, she got it good. Holy camoly. Those things are sinking right in. That's one very happy jumping spider. The white little dots on the cricket are just a bit of calcium. I used the container I was feeding fruit flies to my dart frogs in. That's all that is. I'm just going to reposition herself on the cricket a bit. All right, perfect. There you go, girl. Wonderful. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what do you think I should name my new jumping spider? Today's question is gonna be less deep thinking and whatnot. I just wanna know, give me a name suggestion. And if you see one down in the comments that you like in particular, give it a thumbs up. High as a vote is gonna be a good thing and we're gonna choose something between there. Keep an eye on my community page and I'll announce the winning name there. I'm sure you guys will come up with some creative ideas. Try and think of something that has to do with their color. And because they are comments, as always, I'll give them a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Cause if I love your name, I'm gonna say good job, thank you, that's awesome and you might hear from me, cool. And as always, before we end today's video, I want to take a moment to sincerely thank my patrons over on the Patreon platform. Thank you so much, guys. It really means a lot to me to have your additional support there. Your monthly contributions go to everything that happens in this room, whether it's vet visits, buying cool treats for the animals and more. Naturally, as a pet owner, it's my responsibility to be able to afford these things. But many of you have looked for a way that you can support the channel further, and that's the way you can do it. So what you're doing is so much when you become a channel patron you get a shout out in an upcoming video so in today's video we're thanking Riley for becoming the newest channel patron over on Reptiliatus channel thank you so much Riley I really appreciate your patronage and I look forward to conversing more with you there on that platform if you're interested in learning about how you can become Reptiliatus channel patron for as little as two dollars a month you can check out the link in the video description thank you guys small little update it looks like that penultimate molt guy just molted to adulthood a mature male so in a few days we'll be able to feed him all right everybody there you have it i sincerely hope you enjoyed this really important jumping spider update clearly these animals are a whole bunch of fun to keep they're super cool and i encourage you to look into them if you've been considering keeping a pet invertebrate uh, they, they're really just fascinating so with that being said don't forget to answer today's question of the day i'd love to know what your name suggestion is for this beautiful girl and i can't wait to see you all in an upcoming update when we'll try pairing her up with one of the boys I want to share with you that Reptiliatus channel just hit 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. I don't even know where to begin in offering my sincere thanks, my gratitude, my appreciation. Friends, you made this happen. I would not be here today doing what I love, what I'm passionate about as a career for myself if it wasn't for every single one of you supporting this channel. Being a YouTuber isn't always easy. Let me tell you, your primary source of revenue comes to you once a month through Google AdSense revenue, and that can be challenging. And that's why things like Patreon help so much, and it's a fun way to support a creator. And I'm so appreciative that my patrons there. But the fact that I get to do what I love every single day and 
express my creative passion for the animals that we're all here to love and see and learn about is something that I will always be eternally grateful for. Figuring out what I wanted to do in my life was never a very easy thing. I tried different programs in university and if I'm being a bit more open with you all, I struggled through school. I didn't do very well and frankly speaking, I actually dropped out of university. I felt that it really wasn't for me and um, yeah, that was a hard thing to do. I found myself comparing to others and what they were doing and the very traditional course or, or path that they were taking, you know. I want to be a doctor. I'm going to complete my undergrad. I'm going to complete med school. Ta-da. And I was over here feeling anxious and really stressing about what I wanted. And, and YouTube was this creative outlet that I had always used to express myself over the years and share my love for reptiles and amphibians and invertebrates and wildlife. And to say that I'm here now in front of you doing this as my full-time career, I cannot offer you enough thanks because a lot of who I am, a lot of my sense of purpose, my confidence comes from my ability to do this. And again, it wouldn't be possible without each and every one of you. So my eternal gratitude, my eternal thanks to you all for making my dreams a reality. Thank you for supporting me. It's, it is eternally humbling. I know I'm starting to get repetitive like I do a bit, but I can't offer you enough things. So truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I can't believe we're already blowing past 200K. I think we're at like 200 and, or 200,200 already now. But thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are amazing and I hope you continue to enjoy my channel and thank you. <laughs> How many times I th say thank you there? Does someone want to count? Maybe I'll go check again and, 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 and see if you were right. Anyways, also I just want to say real quick, uh, we didn't talk about 100,000 subscribers two years ago. So if you want me to talk a little bit about that and, and what's going on there, let me know in the comments because a lot of you sent me photos with the 100,000 subscribers. And trust me, I have something in store with that that I just kind of never put together yet. It wasn't in vain, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but if you want me to explain it further, let me know in the comments and, and I can do that in an upcoming video. I've talked enough about subscriber count and my appreciation, so I'll leave it for now, but thank you again. Okay, enjoy the day, enjoy your week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Take care.